Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now it's Friday today, um, so I thought we'd take a look at this puzzle. Um, now Friday is sometimes a, a day where we feature a slightly harder puzzle and looking at the comments that this one received on its blog, which is a blog called Life in Sudoku, uh, it seems to have been, you know, it's taken the people who solved it a good number of minutes to do, so leave yourself some time to do this one. You may wonder what's going on with the, the arrows or the uh, the letters and the numbers in the grid. Well, this is a Renban Sudoku, uh, which is a very simple adjustment to the normal Sudoku rule. Um, so these grey lines here must feature a consecutive series of digits. So on the H shape, for example, how big is the H shape? Seven cells. So there must be seven consecutive digits somehow arranged. They don't have to be in order, so it's not like you have to go one, two, three, four. They can be in any order, but they must be consecutive. And that allows um, compilers to introduce some slightly different logic and also to create these beautiful patterns. So this was this puzzle first appeared on the 31st of December 2017, and hence the message in the grid. Um, so I'm going to have a go now. If you want to have a go, click on the link under the video. That'll take you to exactly the screen you're seeing, and you can have a go too. So how would we do this? Um, I mean, with Renban Sudoku, there are some obvious tactics. Uh, if you spot that uh, one of the lines has a one on it, you know that you must, this, this shape here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells large, must be the numbers one to seven. So we know that there is no eight on this, on this one shape. And in fact, look at this, I uh, know this four shape could still have an eight. Yeah, okay, come back to that. This square's got to be a nine because of the nines here and here. That means these edges have got to be six and eight in some order. This shape is very long. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Ah, so this is interesting. This two is of size nine, so it must contain every single number on it. And if you look carefully, you can see, look, these nines eliminate loads of the cells. All of those yellow cells can't be nines. There's only one cell left that can be. That's that one. And that means there's a nine along the Y shape here, and that's worth recording. Because as I said before, once we manage to lock one of the extreme numbers onto a letter or a number, we know how this this nine shape will do or this y shape will develop one two three four five six seven eight right so it doesn't include a one so the one in this top right box must be in one of those squares uh, because of this one here eliminating that one now uh, I was about to say some ah yes Now there's probably more we can do with this shape here. So where can a one go on this shape? It could go here, I guess. And it could go here. Ah, is there a way of eliminating that? Not sure. Let's carry on with nines instead. These nines here place a nine on the n. So that means there's no, this, this n is of size seven, and there can't be a one or a two on the n, because otherwise we won't be able to make it, uh, the numbers consecutive, given we know there's a nine on the n. So those squares are one and two. Ah, now this is interesting, because now there's a two in one of these two squares and a two here. Oops. So there's a 2 in one of these two squares in the central 3x3 three three block. Now we can't put a 2 on the 0 because there's a 9 already there. So we know the numbers on this 0 are going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is definitely a 2. And Ah, interestingly, the ones are interesting as well now because there can't be a one 
in any of those squares and there can't be a one here because of this one that's already appearing on the one shape so there's a one in one of those two squares that places a one here uh, we, we sort of looked at ones but we couldn't resolve which way they went um, obviously with this square not being able to be a one we place the one here so that gives us the one on the on the two shape now this 7, where can a 7 go on the 2 shape? We know there's a 7 on it somewhere. It can't go here. It obviously can't go in the same box, so it must go here. Now there, there is a 7 on the 8 shape, and there is not an 8. And the 8 shape is of size 7, so that is very helpful. Obviously the 8 shape now contains the numbers from 1 to 7. So, can we do anything with that? Yes. Where can a 4 go on the 8 shape? Only there. Now we know the 8 shape doesn't contain a 9. So there must be a 9 in one of those two. Oh, which we could have got anyway from these 9s, I suppose. Yeah, we've managed to eliminate it from that bottom square. Nine here. Ah, where can it... Yes, this two is quite powerful in terms of this block. I need to put a two in this block, but I can't put it on the grey line because that will lead to a repeated two. So this is the only square that can be a two. And that means one of those squares is a two. Um, where can a 3 go in the central box? We know it's in one of those three squares, but we know it can't be on the 0 because we know that there's no number less than a 4 on this shape here. So the 3 goes into this square. Um, right, so this is of size 6, and we know it doesn't contain a 9. So is it possible that there's an 8 on this shape? Let's put that a different way. Is it possible this shape doesn't contain a 5? It's not possible because 5 is right in the mid middle of the series of numbers. So this 5 here eliminates 5s from those squares. So there must be a 5 in one of those two positions. Um, does that matter? That means there's a 5 up there. Yeah, but we know that the Y shape has got a 5 on it, so it must be in one of those two positions. And we know the Y shape has a 4 on it, and there's a 4 here, so that the 4 must be... The 4 must be in one of those two squares. And this is interesting, actually, because we've also got 3 and 2 being eliminated from... The y is size 8, so we know it contains every number apart from 1. So the 3 and the 2 must be also along that section. Um, can we do more than that? We probably can, but I'm not seeing how to. Right, let's look at this shape, because we know this one can tell 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 7 digits, so it must contain, it doesn't contain an 8, it doesn't contain a 9, so it must contain, well it must contain a 4, and there can't be a 4 in any of those squares because of this 4, 
and it can't be a 4 in any of these squares because of this 4. So that must be a 4. That resolves that to 4. Look over here. Ah, now 5 as well. We know there's a 5 on the 1. And there's 5s there's locked into one of those two squares and this 5 here. So that is a 5. Oh, that's cool because that gives us this 5 and this 5 as well. So now there's a 5 up in one of those two squares. And we know that there is a 7 on this line, and the 7 here means it's not there. So there's a 7 in one of those three squares. Oh, sorry, yes, look, we've got 1s here and here. And the 1 here means there's a 1 on the 8 shape. So now this 8 shape is exactly the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Which means that... Well, it means where can we put an 8 in this block? It can only go here because this shape can only go up to 7 and this shape can only go up to 6. So that is an 8. This is a 6. Pencil's getting in the way. Get away, pencil. Um, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Look, 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 look. Now let's look at these shapes some more. We need to put a 7 and an 8 into this block. But we know. The 8 obviously is impossible to go on any grey line for the reasons I just mentioned. So the 8 is up there. Now where can a 7 go? In theory a 7 could have gone here because this, this shape can take a 7. But we've already locked the 7 into those squares because of this 7. So there is a 7 up here as well. So this is a 7, 8, 9 triple on the Y shape. And there's an 8 and a 9 in that column. So that square I think has to be a 7. Now there must be a 6 in one of those squares. We've already got 2, 3, 5 and 4 locked into the Y shape. We need a 6 as well. And now where can an 8 go in this shape? Well, it can only go there. Now that locks a 1 into the top row, which means this is a 2. This is a beautifully designed puzzle, isn't it? Wow. Um, So there's a 1 in one of those two squares. I've lost track really of whether I've worked out whether there's a 1 on this 8 shape or not. I um, can't remember. But we know the 2 shape must have a 6 on it and there's a 6 there. So that's a 6. That means there's a 2 6 pair look at the, on, on the 8 shape. Oh, sorry, I had worked it out because I'd locked nines into there. So there's no, yeah, there's no nine and, oh, well, maybe there could be an eight. Could there be an eight in that square? Ah, no, there can't be an eight in that square now because of that. So this eight shape is exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There's an eight in one of those two squares. And there's a 3 in one of these two squares because of that 3 there, look. So this is a 3, 8 pair. This is 1, 5 and 7 up here. And that, uh, that can't be a 7. Still not, I'm still not exactly sure I can say with certainty that this is a 1 and that the 1 isn't here. 
being a bit dim. Um, but I've now got one, two, I need a three on the H shape, it can only go there. That means there's no three along here, look. And so there's a three in one of these two squares. This puzzle is very, very cool. Um, this must be an eight, look, because of the eight up here. I should have got that before. There's a lot going on though. Right, so this must be three and five into these two squares. Obviously this is three and eight here. So this is one and five along here, oops. That resolves that this isn't a one. The one must be in that square. Five, one, two, three. Right. So where can four go in the central block? This four and this four mean it can only go here, which again, that's been available for a while. Four's up in one of these two squares. Uh, so we know one of these two squares must be a 7 and one of these squares must be an 8 because of the 8's here so this square is a 6 7, 8 here resolves the 3 and the 8 over on this side that places a 3 in one of those two squares now I can't quite see we know that there is a 3 on both of these numbers, but I can't see how to resolve that yet. We know this must be a 6 now, just to complete the row. So I need 1, 2 and 3 into those squares. So this can only... well this is a 2, 3 pair. Again, I feel like I should be able to resolve that. I'm being a bit slow. Uh, let's look at this shape though, because we've already got four of the six numbers. We know these two must be five and six, and we don't know the order yet, but that does resolve that this is a three. There must be a six in one of those two squares. These two squares must be, uh, what's that going to be, 7 and 8, which is resolvable. That's good because that's going to allow us to get that 7 and 8. That places a 7 in one of these two squares at the top. 8, 8. There must be an 8 in this square now because of all of these 8s dotted around the grid. When we place this 8 in, we replace the 4 as well, which is nice. Now this square can't be a 4, so the 4 must be there. 7, 9. So these two are 5 and 6, aren't they, I think? Those two there. 4. Sort of skyscraper there, from 5s and 6s. For those of you who like your advanced techniques. Um, so now we need 1, 2 and 7 along here. Ah, now that's that's important because that means that there is no 7 in either of those squares obviously. So there must be a 3 down here. One, 2, 7 here. This is a one, look, there's a two, three here. We need a, still need, so this is just a naked single. Could have got that before. That resolves that this square here is a two. That resolves the seven and the one. This square now must be a three, obviously. Oops, that's the wrong button. Three. This is two, five, six. So this is seven and nine. That means this is seven, this, oops. 7, 9, 9, 8, 9, This 2 here means this can't be a 2 as well. That would repeat a digit on the shape. That means that that's a 2. This is 
3, this is 6, and this is a 5-6 pair again, so another 5-6 pair. The 2 here resolves the 2-6, that's going to back us into all of these 5s and 6s, look. Isn't this gorgeous? Oops, 5-6 like that. This is a 7. This must be 1, 5, 1. So that was the 1 in the end. That's a 7, that's a 9. And let's just take a stare at this for a second. We should be looking at 5 and 9. Is that going to work out? I think it is. There we go. So that's how to do that Renban Sudoku. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I thought it was a beautiful puzzle. What a gorgeous design. Um, and um, yeah, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.